She's got some nice Welcome back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube and also anywhere you get your podcasts. Just search for Unbearable Sports and you can download the show. Just rate five stars. It helps the show out tremendously. So I'm flying it solo today on this bonus episode. Like we have always set out to do, we're going to make you the most informed Bears fan out there. Now, even if you're listening or watching this and you aren't a Bears fan, don't worry. There's still plenty for you to listen to because we will be going through the NFL PA Collegiate Bowl. Now, I really just whittled it down to five people because when you watch the game, if you watch this game, it didn't remind you of an AAF game or like a USFL game where there's a handful of people that really shined I felt like you could kind of see that okay these guys are really good and then the other players eh, kind of okay so that's why I want to just whittle it down to five people and just so that we can at least watch them and think about these guys add them to our list because there was a good amount of people that really shined during that game so this is one of the first times that I actually have it in order. <laughs> so we are going to start with five. And then the one that I thought was most impressive, I saved for number one. But in typical fashion, I am going to slightly cheat. And I actually have two people at my five spot at five and six. And you'll understand why. So I have Malik Cunningham, I'd say at the sixth spot. And he was the quarterback out of Louisville. Now, the reason... To me, he didn't impress, so to speak, but I thought that, especially from a Bears perspective, or even like if there's Ravens fans that are listening to this, he reminded me he gets an easy Lamar Jackson type of a comp, but if the Bears want to kind of keep with some of that running offense, obviously you're hoping that we're passing it a little bit more, but Malik Cunningham is someone that could be a good undrafted rookie free agent that kind of picks where he wants to go. He it, he overall had. Three, three out of five passes completed for 28 yards and also two carries for 18 yards. Like I said, not an amazing performance, but he showed some wheels. He showed that he could decently throw it. And I think ultimately he's going to end up undrafted. So he's someone to just kind of star. He might be at the combine, so someone to look out for. But also I could really see him being added to the Bears roster as an undrafted rookie free agent because of the speed and bringing in some youth to see, all right, is are one of these people better than Tim Boyle? Now that we're not trying to tank, we don't need Nathan Peterman or anybody like that. So I think Malik Cunningham is just a good person to star. Now, the reason why I cheated with this is number five is actually Keelan Harris, the wide receiver out of Oklahoma Baptist. And he didn't catch a pass. Quite frankly, I didn't even really see him out there when I was watching. But to me, the reason why I have him starred, it's not from the game. It's more for the practice. He earned the nickname Hollywood Baptist during the NFL PA practices. So to me, I want to watch this guy. I want to see what he's capable of and keep your eyes out. See if there's any highlight films out there because there's really not a lot out there. He got signed with an agent. Not crazy, but I'm hoping that he can be at the NFL scouting combine He's someone to just star and remember, just remember Oklahoma Baptist. <laughs> it's, it's hard to remember, but just remember that because then hopefully we can try and find him and he could be a late round person that we target at that wide receiver position. But let's go back to people that actually played in the game and talk about and actually did stuff in the game that really impressed. Now, number four, this was someone on my watch list, Mitchell Tinsley out of Penn State. Three catches, 36 yards. There's not a lot of passing that goes on in these games. Overall, one side had 136, the other side 313. But Mitchell Tinsley, to me, was someone that, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, he, he really showed that he was better, I felt, than the other players out there. He really kind of showed a different gear when he had the ball in his hands, they threw it a lot to him on screens, just kind of showing off more of his athleticism and his ability to break tackles. He's been a very good playmaker for um, for Eastern uh, Eastern Kentucky when Bailey Zappi was the quarterback, but also at Penn State, like I said, kind of fell back a little bit. 
But what I think he proved to me is that he belongs in the NFL and he is someone that can play. I still am nervous about him body catching. He did make a good catch going up for it, but he still, I still want to see those hands a little bit better. And that's why he's not like a third rounder or a second rounder, but I think he's someone late fifth, six to keep an eye out for to just add more depth to this wide receiver room. Mitchell Tinsley, good game. Let's go to number three. Number three, this is another guy. I was, this guy, I actually wanted to kind of put number one because to me, he looked really good. And that is Mikel Jones out of Syracuse, linebacker. We talked about him in the preview. Another guy that I said, let's target him. Linebacker, he was arguably the highest ranked uh, consensusly going into this game. And he didn't disappoint. He just looked the part. He had five tackles and he tackled someone at the line of scrimmage, made a really good play. So it's not a tackle for a loss, but it might be ESPN might call that a run stuff. He had to get past somebody, really kind of shed a block and make a big play. The big thing about Mikel Jones, a small uh, six one, so not huge. And I think about 225 or 220 ish. So he's a smaller, quicker, rangy type of a player. And he showed every bit of that out there um, for display. And to me, you look at what the Bears did with bringing in the linebackers, right? Adams and Morrow, smaller, quicker linebackers. I think that Mikel Jones really fits that mold. To me, watching him, I'm like, the Bears are going to fall in love with this guy. He looks like one of the Bears linebackers that they had this year. I just see him fitting this system. I might call it, I think he's going to be a fifth or sixth round pick to the Bears. I really do think they're going to like this guy. <laughs> so we'll see if that turns out, but I really do like his fit with the Chicago Bears. Mikel Jones out of Syracuse, watch the tape. Let me know what you think, because I think he's just a good fit in this system. Now, number two, this guy, I, I literally had him at number one, and I'm like, ah, I won't. This person impressed me out of Boise State. Scott Matlock, this is a defensive tackle that I mentioned before. Yet another person that I mentioned in the preview, somebody to watch. He was dominant. He was the most dominant force on the interior, just always blown by his guy. Amazing. One sack, one tackle for a loss. They nicknamed him Big Red because he's a, he's a ginger. He's got red hair and red beard. And yes, he looks like he's got some unwanted pounds on him. But he looked good. Now, watching him, I'm not like this guy is going to all of a sudden be a steal in the draft. But when I was watching him, I'm like, this guy is a that classic eight-year veteran, right? I see him as a backup player that just does well. And we need some depth on this defensive line, especially in the interior. I can see the Bears signing some free agents to be those starters. Scott Matlock can be a very good depth piece that you can get in that fifth round, sixth round. He really showed out and was dominant. So I'm looking at him going into the scouting combine. Like I said, a lot of unwanted weight. He's got to shed some pounds. So like he, he looked, he looked flabby, even though he was the best guy out there. Like the best defensive tackle by far was Scott Matlock. So mark him down. He looked good. A good late round guy. Guy, So a lot of these players, they're not going to be in the thirds or higher, I feel. And unless Keelan Harris is really the that guy out of Oklahoma Baptist, but a lot of these are later round pieces that can really fill out this roster. But my number one, number one, not even on my on my watch list. So this was a pleasant surprise. Thomas Rush out of Minnesota. He is a defensive end. I think he's 6'5", 250, so he's got good size. I think I just looking at him, it looks like he's got a little bit of short arms. He reminds me of Bradley and I coming out where Bradley and I went to, I think, the senior bowl and dominated, right? This guy had two sacks in this game. Amazing. And he just beat every rep. He had two sacks and one tackle for a loss. This guy was incredible out there. And he just literally was just blown by his guy. Every time that you saw him, he was destroying the tackles out there, looked better. 
he, like he looked like the best defensive player out there. Him and Scott Matlock easily were like the most disruptive people on that line. Mikel Jones just looked the part at linebacker, but Matlock and Thomas Rush were the guys up front that were just wrecking havoc. So to me, the two sacks, here's what's crazy, is Thomas Rush had one and a half sacks for Minnesota last year. He gets two in the All-Star game. Now, one was a little bit of a cleanup sack. like kind of got him, but still, he pressured the quarterback a lot and looked really good out there. So he's someone I just want to see where is he going to be at? Because <laughs> nobody has scouting reports on Thomas Rush really out there. So I'm curious to see, does this vault him anywhere? Does this bring him in the discussion to the scouting combine? And he, he definitely deserved it after a game like this. So I hope he's out there. I hope he's able to make a case to potentially be a seventh or a six round draft pick because he looked good and just dominant out there and he did play a little bit more standing up there was a couple of snaps though that he did have his hand in the dirt so it seems like he could be a fit at a defensive end in a 4-3 seems maybe a 3-4 might be more suitable uh for him as well um so that's my list that's my five slash six if you will <laughs> but I will say honorable mention Titus Swen he was a wide receiver he had um a let's see or no running back he had eight carries for 73 yards but also four catches for 22 yards was also the return man he just didn't jump out to me overall uh Corey Durden who was on my watch list had two good plays but that was really kind of it um that's why he didn't make my list everyone else really kind of looked the part he got blocked a good handful of times even though they made some uh, decent plays and Daryl Nachami was out of Maryland defensive end was someone I wanted to highlight too because this is the guy that I mentioned in the preview very toolsy let's see what he can do he's got that length that NFL people love and there was a time where he got absolutely demolished like pancaked by a tight end and then another play he looked like kind of disinterested he tried to go past the guy and then after that he was kind of like yeah but then right after he made all these bad plays where I'm like, this guy's not good, he ends up bull rushing his guy and looks phenomenal. Then he beats the guy to the outside. So Darrell Nachami is someone definitely to look at. Keep him on your list for at least the scouting combine. He's going to get invited because he's more of a physical trait guy. I could see him kind of maybe not blowing it up because he's not a huge speed person, but he's going to be someone that's on some people's radars because of his overall size. So that's about it. We're going to keep this a little short and sweet uh, because it's it's the NFL PA Bowl, right? We There were some good players that were out there. We're on to the Senior Bowl now. So that's what we're going to be previewing. I think we might preview it on Thursday. Otherwise, we might preview it on Friday. I got to talk to PayPal about that. But make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. And if you like what you're listening, download the podcast everywhere you get your podcast. Just search for unbearable sports and with that unbearable sports podcast we're out yeah she's got some nice long hair and you notice she's a